Hi guys, welcome back to Iconic, the podcast with me, your host, Linda Stretton. I'm a holistic healer and new paradigm business coach and a marketing consultant to forward thinking brands. And today I'm so excited to be joined by one of my beautiful mentors, Amy Lee. Amy has been so transformational on my journey. I first discovered Amy last year and I went on to study astrology with her and then human design. Then I joined her projector mastermind and she has really, really helped me better understand myself, but really importantly, start to do life so differently to how I used to do it. So when I launched my business, I think I mentioned this on the podcast, actually, I'm, I launched with the tagline, helping women maintain their health through the hustle, because I was such a hustler. I had been rewarded my whole life for working hard and going the extra mile and doing all the things and working the 14 hour days, the weekends, all the different things. And I loved it because I was addicted to that buzz of working all the time. And so I was, I was a hustler. It was my thing. And then after really understanding, oh, and I knew as a, I knew as a projector in human design, but it never resonated with me because I always used to just hear that projectors like work four hours a day and have afternoon naps. And it wasn't my thing. I was like, you'll never get me having an afternoon nap. And I don't only want to work four hours a day. And I didn't resonate with it. And I kind of ignored it a bit. But yeah, working with Amy, I've understood it so much better. And yeah, she's completely transformed my life. Anyway, side note, going on about myself. This podcast is so incredible. We talk all about Amy's journey into launching her own business. We talk about hustle, (laughs) coherence over hustle, which is something that Amy talks about a lot. We talk about getting in the body and the gift that human design is for that. And we also talk about branding and really the energetics of business which is such a huge part of what Amy teaches and Amy is uh, an expert in astrology human design gene keys and 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 energetics and she weaves it all together in in business as well so it's such a jam-packed incredible conversation and at the end Amy tells us about a new business that she's recently launched called My Constellation and in that business currently she is selling energy guides which are um, a pdf all about your human design and she has offered a discount a 10 percent discount the code is in the show notes it's iconic 10 i've started buying these for all of my clients and i've bought them for my family as well so i i really love them and i'm sure you love them too and i'm sure you'll absolutely love amy if you don't already know her which again you probably do because she's kind of iconic <laughs> so perfect for the podcast anyway I hope you enjoy and I'll see you soon hi guys welcome back to the podcast I am joined by the beautiful Amy Lee welcome Amy hi Linda thanks for having me I'm so excited to be here thank you for being here um we we could talk about so much today I have no idea where this conversation will go so let's just flow um quad right you're gonna love that Let's start by just introducing yourself to everybody, tell everyone who you are, what you do, and how you came to do what you do in the world today. Perfect. Okay. Flow is good. Flow is good. Um, So I'm Amy Lee. So I'm an astrologer, a human design guide, and a business mentor. Um, So where did that, where does that begin? Um, Well, I always had an interest in astrology, you know, as I think we were just talking about before. Um, always loved astrology my whole life never thought I'd end up being an astrologer ever like if you'd asked me when I was a teenager it would probably have been at the bottom of like a thousand things of what I thought I would have ended up doing anyway always loved astrology Um, decided to study astrology for fun in 2017 found human design at the same time and I came from a career of like um, a corporate career where I had many many cycles of burnout and depletion so I think similar to you, Linda, and a lot of other women who were projectors as well. I'm a projector in human design. Finding human design felt like like that missing piece for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was just, yeah, starting to give astrology readings and started weaving human design in. And then my career before this was in business. So I worked in 
sort of small to medium size um, fashion and e-commerce businesses. So the work I do now really kind of blends like the human design and the astrology study that I've done. Um, I've done a lot of study in energetics as well um, with everything I learned in traditional kind of business, working closely with CEOs. I worked in HR. Um, and so, yeah, my work's kind of a mixture of all those things. I kind of teach astrology and human design now. And then I also work with business owners in like masterminds or in one-on-one. Um, and yeah, just really passionate about these systems. And I think the, the impact that they can have on us personally and in our, our businesses, in our, in our work. Um, yeah, I've been in. So I discovered Amy last year and I jumped into her astrology training and then human design training. And then I joined your projector mastermind. So I kind of feel like I've been with you for a year, just like full time yeah. pretty much. Cause like yeah. I just need one thing after another. Um, and the energetics bit of it, I didn't expect to jump into this so early. It's a, it's a really big part of what you teach actually. Is that what what came first then the the systems or the energetics which one did you like dive into first oh probably oh kind of both in a way so I really got into energetics in like 2012 I um again I was pretty young I was 23 and I was diagnosed with an autoimmune condition in 2012 I think 2012 was like kind of a catalyzing year for a lot of people and that like really drastically changed my life. And so I became interested in energy back then more from the perspective of health, um, Mm. like, and the body and trying to understand, you know, and got into like the chakras and started reading like Caroline Mace and um, like anatomy of the spirit was like life changing for me at the time. Um, And then just always had an interest, then found astrology and human design, then went back into train in different types of energetics after that. So I did my um, training in a modality called energy and soul medicine in 2018, 2019, because I started working with human design and astrology and was doing readings and realized like, oh, this is incredible, but I feel like I need more awareness and knowledge and skills to help support transformation. Like I wasn't Mm. feeling that projector success in just giving readings, you know? And so I feel like all the other study that I've then gone on to do. I'm studying different forms of like nervous system and somatics and things like that now. Like it all helps. It's all complementary with these systems because they really are systems that are about energy. But then having these other tools can help you facilitate kind of deeper change. Um, Yeah, yeah, so kind of both. They've just kind of always been there. The energy, the systems, like particularly astrology. I loved astrology as a teenager. Like I can remember when I found... Um, when I discovered astrology, I was like six years old and I can remember my cousin telling me I was a cancer and explaining to me like what that meant, you know, and um, mm. just used to secretly get readings, you know, and yeah. like <laughs> buy books and all the things. So they've both always kind of been there. And I feel um, like astrology, what you, we were talking about before the call, astrology is something I feel like I've done for many lives and the same with energetics. I feel like I've mm. worked with energy for many lives before this one. Yeah. Yeah. So t- let's talk about the evolution into business then. So coming from like a hobby, I, I completely agree. Mm. I've got to say that I've just, I agree with you so much in terms of like not feeling that satisfaction and being that success from, just telling people information and actually wanting to help them transform as well. And, you know, that's why I've ended up doing so many different things as well. Cause it's like, I started off with the nutrition. It was like, but what's driving their health issues is more like mindset stuff and like inner child, like, like wounding Mm -hmm. and these beliefs that are causing them to act out of alignment. And it's just been this constant, like follow the nudges, follow the nudges, like what's lighting me up. And then yeah, pulling those tools in, but yeah, the evolution into business then. So what I love about your story You know, something that we see so much in like the online, um, you know, if you just look at Instagram and the online coaching space, it feels like people launch a business and then having these like six figure months. Well, it used to be 10K, didn't it? It was always about 10K months. And then suddenly now we're on six figure months and we're having like, I'm even seeing like million dollar months and all this kind of thing. And and it, I think it's setting people up for believing they can launch a business and be successful overnight. And, you know, we talk about nervous system regulation, something that we need as a society Society is money <laughs> to support us in living. And so if people just 
feel like I'll leave my job and launch my business tomorrow with nothing in the bank. You know, I did do that, but I had, I was set up for, you know, success because I, I did have good savings. You know, if someone isn't in that position, it's a lot of pressure on the nervous system when you first start. And what I love about your story, you're, you're like really honest. You're like, I did it really slowly. You know, I started off alongside my full-time job and transitioned. So yeah, tell us tell us how you evolved into it and when you knew it was time to go full-time. Mm, so yeah, I did do it very slowly. I think a lot of other people would have um, moved things a lot faster than what I did. I was in a situation where I was like, slowly quitting my job too like I think they ended up having like nearly nine months notice you know because I um, had a really good relationship with my boss and you know it was one of these sort of slow exits um, there was I'll, I'll be honest there did at times feel like a lot of urgency for me there were definitely times where I knew I wasn't ready to leave my job like there were things I had to finish there I wasn't I was always very conscious that I didn't want to put pressure or stress on the business either yeah you know, and I didn't want to put pressure or stress on my body, having like had a health history. And I was already, I started to really learn about the nervous system back in 2018. So I was always like, and that's when I started my business in June, 2018. So it's like, I was starting this business. I was learning all of these things. I knew I didn't want to drop into freeze or fight or flight or just completely frag my nervous system because um, I guess in the energetics that I'm trained in, like what what happens when we move into like a contraction, you know, if our energy contracts, things start to happen in our lives, you know, and it's sort of that energetic contraction that can be reflected in like external things happening. And so I knew that if I was going to leave my job, it needed to be in a state of expansion, not contraction, because I knew I would just fuck everything up if I, yeah. was, if I was contracted. Um, and so, yeah, I really ended up having to leave my job. I was kind of forced to because of the pandemic, too I probably would have stayed a little bit longer if COVID hadn't happened mm. you know it that kind of force because the business I worked for it was a retailer they were e-commerce but they had stores um and I don't know if this happened in the UK but in Australia like teams just got stood down like yeah. people were just like there's no work for the next month go home no one's getting paid like all of this stuff yeah. and so I just exited like at that time when all of that was happening um and yeah, but it was, uh, I'll be honest, there were definitely times where there was urgency. I could feel my body telling me like, no, you need to get out of this. You need to be working for yourself because you need to create something that, you know, I just knew like the traditional working environment wasn't supporting me long term, mm. you know, and I'm a bit of a drama queen, like I'm a Leo rising, but I would literally say to like my family, like in those last few months, especially like, I feel like I'm dying. <laughs> like, I feel like my body is like, this isn't it. You need to move. And I was starting to feel so much discomfort in my body as well. And, you know, I'm a quad right in human design. So when I know a lot of that was the structure, the having to be somewhere at a certain time every day, I was also just really burnt out. My sacral was burnt out. I was working mm -hmm. in an office with like 25 people, you know, had very little boundaries. I, you know, I always seem to have roles where, I would be the person who would kind of be across other people's roles or I would cover for other people in the team, like just almost like that person who could kind of bridge gaps between different departments and understand, you know, and was just so burnt out from that. Um, but so I that was say, yeah, the go-to girl. They used to call it because we, yeah. I think we talked about this in the, um, in the mastermind actually. Yeah. They used to call me like the go-to girl because you need something doing like Linda would get it done. And yeah. And this is like the not self of the projector, isn't it? It's like, taking yeah. in the energy, amplifying and being able to do all these things and juggling it, but then burning ourselves out. Yeah, hundred percent. Undefined sacral, undefined ego, right? Cause it was definitely being yeah. driven by that desire to prove like, yeah, I can yeah. do that. I'll prove myself. And I had a realization when I left, finally left my job, you know, so I, I started my business, my side business in June, 2018. I didn't leave my job until it was March, 2020. So it was mm. nearly two years of balancing them both. Yeah. Um, and in saying that, I say I started my business in June 2018. I was doing stuff for years before that too. Like I was taking business courses, like I did B school, yes. like back yeah. in like 2016, I think before I even knew what the business was going to be. I was like, I know I'm going to do something. So I'm going to start this. I'm going to start doing business courses and learning about being an entrepreneur and, you know, more because I guess my experience was in bigger businesses it was like what do you do when you're starting something from like mm. grassroots 
Um, and uh, yeah, so it feels like a long time, you know, for me, it, like it definitely wasn't overnight, but there were people in my industry because human design was really taking off then. There were people in my industry who started businesses after me and were full-time doing amazing things a lot in, in a faster, shorter time period than what I did. Um, but I can feel that the way I did it was perfect for me and what my body needed um, and what my nervous system needed and what the business needed to, for longevity too. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really personalised, isn't it? It's, it's kind of like mm. what, that ne- what your nervous system can hold because actually as you were talking, mm. some people who have got, you know, great relationship with money, have been brought up with a lot of money around them and and wealth and, Mm -hmm. you know, having a huge success straight away, they can probably hold it and keep holding it. Whereas other people may not be used to it, you know, open, you know, open heart problems, may not feel worthy of it, may like crash and burn, like burn it to the ground, end up quitting because it's like, I can't hold this success. It's like too much. I don't feel I'm worthy of it. Do you know what I mean? So Yeah. yeah, I think it's super personalized and yeah, thank you for that. And you touched on that about the body. Let's talk about the body then, because this is something obviously, you know, very human design. Um, listening to your body, which I think is something that is completely shut off in most people in society. And I told you this story before, I think, a couple of years ago, before I discovered human design. I remember working with a coach and him saying, You need to get out of your head. And, and feel into your body and I remember at the time just like sitting there and like listening to him for like my whole hour with him and then right at the end of the call he's like right so you're clear on your homework and I was like can you just explain what you mean by feeling into your body because like I don't feel in my body like it was that alien to me but mm. it's 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 obviously it's obviously what we should be doing you know from a human design perspective and it's something that you are so good at listening to and I know we all have different authorities and so everything's going to be different, but let's let tell people a little bit about advice of how they can like get into in tune with their body and the messages it's giving them. You know, if it's not a really obvious, like ache and pain. Um, yeah. Any subtle signs? Yeah, it is so important. And you're so right. We're not taught to connect and be in our bodies. We live in a world that you know because we live in a a, a, I'm probably going to go off on a tangent here sorry we live in a seven-centered world right and we're nine-centered beings now and so the seven-centered world which um, really we've been evolved beyond for like 200 years that that world the seven-centered being was governed by the mind and the ajna Mm. right like that was their how they were designed to make decisions we evolved like 200 and something years ago into nine center beings we have this more complex system right and we're designed to be innately receptive and we're designed to be moving through the world from our bodies but the world that we live in is still geared towards that seven centered strategic way right so the way Mm. where things were taught in school the way corporations run like the things that kind of come through university they're still very much from that old paradigm and we're just like yeah very few people are really taught to be in tune and connected with their body um and so you know and like if you think about like when you're growing up like if you have decisions to make you know oh, for, for me anyway my parents would you know well why don't you think about it you know, what's the smart kind of logical thing to do, write a pros and cons list. Like there's very little like, well, what's your gut saying? Or what's your body? (laughs) How does your body feel? Like we're just, we weren't taught that. Um, And so this is the whole point of human design. Like I really see human design as a tool for embodiment. And Mm. and this is what Ra Uruhu, the man who founded human design, he always said like the system is here for the form and the feminine, which is the body and the earth. Mm. Um, right our masculine is our spirit and more of our yang and our consciousness whereas the body and our unconscious is the feminine and so this is what the system is here for Um, and so this is what human design can help you do like uh, by coming into alignment with your strategy and your authority primarily the whole point of that is to bypass the mind and help you get into your body so you can be moving through the world and making aligned decisions from that place it's like your decision making superpower Mm. um so that's like one piece of it you're working with your authority can really help but there's all these other things you can do right like so you know if you usually a sign that you're really in your head is going to be like if you find yourself saying those things like well what do I think about this if you're trying to overanalyze you know even if you can just feel your energy like just up here all the time right they're normally signs that you're you're in your head um so things that I love to like get into the body that I feel 
are really complementary to working with your human design and your authority are things like embodiment, things like breath work, touch, tapping, like anything Mm. that helps like just drop you down, you know, Mm. just let go of that, drop you back into the heart and then back into more like the, the even lower, like the sacral, the womb space. Um, And you can just, you know, you open, when you do that, you're open to so much more potential and possibility because the, when the mind's running the show, it's really limiting the possibilities because the mind is always kind of thinking logically and it wants to keep you safe and it wants to have certainty. Yeah. And you kind of can miss really amazing opportunities that maybe don't make logical sense when you're, when you're kind of stuck up there. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, as you were talking, I was thinking about that when in the corporate world, we really recognized for strategic thinking and it's all you know in your head you know it's like you know for me it's like the marketing strategy literally it's like you think you're right you're thinking about it and actually I just started laughing to myself in my head because I was like when you do like a new campaign so say it's like the Christmas campaign it's always looking back oh what did we do last year what worked and what did the competitors do and it's actually yeah in those situations I understand and I, I I do talk about this when it's when we're part of a bigger corporation and we've got stakeholders to get buy-in from and ideas that we want to present to them and stuff like that like you know stuff like research and that really helps because we we, you know put things in front of real customers and getting feedback and helping that feed in but when we're like owning our own business so many people are outsourcing their power to research inverted commas so like looking at what competitors are doing seeing what messages they're doing I because I'm the same as you you know I came from having multi multi I mean my latest role I had about a 45 million budget UK I had a lot of money to spend and so when I was launching my first business it was like first business look at that I might be launching a new business soon Amy I just like came through when I launched my business <laughs> I was like oh how do I do this with no money like and, and I started signing up for programs and you know and, and some things like you would literally get taught Instagram go and look at competitors inverted commas and um look at their best performing posts and then try and rewrite them in your own words and, it, and it's all like you'd literally talk to copy and it's like find people and speak to them and, and I just don't think we talked about this in the last time as well it's like we, we just don't tap in enough to ourselves and what we're you know what our body is telling us to do or the divine the divine downloads that we get because you know we are getting things through it's not like the brain doesn't you know the brain doesn't exist it's like stuff comes in and then we need to feel into body is it something is the energy there do I want to chase this um so yeah that just like as you were talking it just made me think about that going on tangent sorry about that on that note something I'd really love to speak about is creating your brand because I feel like you I mean there's a lot of people trying to copy you now but I feel like you're so distinctive in the market certainly when I discovered you it felt like there was no one else out there and um you've recently shared some old posts from like 2018 for example and you and and then your branding was you know it's obviously evolved but it they still had that like calmness and just this beautiful beautiful content how for anyone who's just sort of launching their business now or has a business and they're just feeling a bit blocked and they don't think things are working have you got any advice for how they can like tap into their brand their brand essence their like creative look and feel like how they're sort of presenting themselves to the world Mm, yeah I um you know brand I love branding I think it's such an important piece of all of this because it really to me like your brand and it can seem silly to some people like I'm so you know specific with like fonts and things like that and I've worked with people before who've been like can't we just use this font I'm like no it has to be that font like I will not (laughs) use any other font but that font um so like I can probably be a little bit you know specific about things but to me it's the interface you know that branding Mm -hmm. it's really the interface between your business and your soul clients and it your branding should be a reflection of like your essence and the essence of your work and your business so that it can reach the right people and be on the right frequency with the people who are for you, you know, even things like tone of voice, colors, you know, if that's not in alignment with your truth, it's probably still going to find people, but there's going to be sort of a mismatch and off with the frequency, Mm. right? So I feel like branding is so important and it should ideally be a reflection of you and what your energy feels like. 
Um, you know, I love to use astrology, like for yeah. branding, you know, so yeah. my branding has always been deeply, you know, that was a big influence for me. Um, particularly, I have so much water in my chart and I have, you know, um, Gemini midheaven. I also really have, enjoy Taurian energy. Um, so my branding has always felt like a bit of a mixture. Like I've always wanted it to feel like warm and nurturing, which is my Cancer, cancerian sun mm. i've always wanted it to feel a bit mystical with my piscean moon i've always wanted it to feel really light and spacious which is like my gemini midheaven my gemini mercury um but also really grounded um and you know embodied so they're like i think if you can if you can fine tune like the essence of what you're trying to cultivate and then you can easily bring in sort of colors and fonts that evoke that kind of feeling um I'm feelings cognition too so everything that I create it's always about what's the feeling being evoked here you know for someone else it could be you know there could be something else that they're picking up on but that's just how my um super sense kind of works right it's like what's the feeling that this is ultimately giving me so even I try to use like softer fonts a lot of Mm -hmm. the time you know bringing in even if I'm using a a sharper font I'll use a softer font with it because I always want it to feel kind of soft and nurturing and warm um yeah Yes, and it's so creative. I think as long as it's the essence of you, right? Because if you're, that's the whole thing, it's the interface. And if you're called to put your soul work out there, it's because there's people who desire your medicine, right? And if you change your branding or you dilute your branding or, you know, someone tells you, oh, use these colors because these colors are trendy or whatever, and it's not a reflection of you, it's never going to feel good. You're never going to attract the right people. Um, Yeah. Yeah. It's it's really got to be a reflection of you. Yeah. And, and, and just linked to that as well, the, your relationship with social media, obviously your main platform is Instagram. Mm. What I love about you is like you show up and you might do like two posts in a day and then you just kind of disappear and we don't see you for weeks and you really do like follow your energy. And again, I feel like everything you've done with your building your business goes against what you would learn in a marketing course, or like business course. It's just like, it's like, it's literally the opposite. I've literally done the opposite. And I've always done that. I've always been like, I'm going to share. And then I just fuck off for a little bit. And I'm like really offline. Like, but I have to, I'm a projector. I'm a quad right projector. And if I'd tried to force consistency, it wouldn't have been sustainable for me. Um, yeah. And I probably would have burnt out or got sick of it or got felt bitter or, fr- you know, so because I ebb and flow with my content, I never feel bitter about it. Like I mm. love creating content when the energy is good because I don't force myself to t- churn out content like a machine, you know, and I feel like when I do post, you know, I would rather post once a week with something that feels like it's got a lot of depth and that there's a real transmission there than post five times a week with things that are just space fillers. You know, that's yeah. just always been what's authentic to me and not saying people who post five times a week, that's amazing, you know, but I have never I might in the future post that often, but like for me, it, it, the content has to be in integrity with what do I want to say right now? Because again, this is what human design teaches us, right? It's all the transmission yeah. and the impact that we're having by being in each other's energy. Um, and so I'm always very aware of that, you know, what am I putting out? What am I creating? Like I would never have someone create, you know, I'm creating another business and I might have someone help with content for that, but I would never have someone else create content for my Amy Lee page because yeah. it's my transmission. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was about Personally. to ask you a question. I was about to ask you a question and it suddenly went, it's like, it can't be important. Um, <laughs> yeah. What was I going to say linked to that? I don't know. Let's talk about, yeah. So let's talk about, um, setting yourself up no I don't know what I want to ask you Amy while I've got you so everyone just so you know if you're feeling a bit lost by this conversation like oh my god I don't even know what human design is what are they even talking about I said to Amy at the start like I I don't want to like make you talk about the different energy types and stuff because I feel like that's a a waste of everyone's availability to Amy to talk about business so I'm just gonna do a solo episode and do like you know we'll talk about human design a little bit and if it hasn't already gone out, that'll come. So don't stress and um, just sort of listen and take what you want. But I really think we should talk to you about the quad right thing because that probably is going over some people's heads and you're very unique because they call you the alien, don't they? Not you specifically, but quad right. So just like a little bit explain to people what the quad right is. 
Yeah. So when you get into the deeper layers of your human design, there's a part of your human design called variable. And so it's essentially there's these four quadrants or you can see the four arrows on your chart and they describe, you know, on the left hand side, they describe how your brain works um, and they describe the environment that you're best suited into. So very much about like the body. And then on the right hand side, they're more to do with your consciousness and they describe like how you view the world and then how strategic you're meant to be. Um, and so with the arrows, it goes a lot deeper than just quad right to like the quad rights. Even if someone else is a quad right, we, we would be still so different because of like the deeper substructure underneath, but essentially rightness, any right facing arrows, uh, areas where you need to flow, where you are receptive, where you are passive, it's more feminized energy. Whereas any arrows that you have that are left, the more yang structured strategic. So being a quad right, it means all four of the arrows of my variables are right facing. So quad right people are on the highest spectrum of flow in receptivity, right? We're all receptive beings. This is what as nine centered beings in human design, we're all meant to be receptive, which is what our authority allows us to do. But some people who have more leftness in their variables would be more strategic than I would, more focused, more structured, you know? So me talking about how I work with my content like that, like this is such a good point because not everyone's going to need to be as flowy and unstructured as I do. Like when you're quad right, you're literally, you're here to be a resource others that other people can draw on but you're not here to be focused you're not here to be under pressure you know you take in everything you're kind of described in human design as being like an ocean or a well or a universe and people are just meant to draw from you but it's Mm. it's very passive energy um and because you're taking everything in like if I'm sitting down like in a cafe I'm taking in like every single person in that cafe I'm noticing what's happening out the front out the side like you know it's like I feel like I have spidey senses. Like I can even tell when people are like coming up my driveway, like it's like ultra sensitive to everything around you. Whereas someone who's left, if if I was sitting in a cafe with a quad left, they're going to be focused in on just me. They're not going to be aware of like what's happening over there. They're going to be really focusing on me and taking me in and my energy. So that's kind of the difference. So rightness needs to flow. Leftness does need more structure. Mm. So we're all a combination of both usually. yeah, I'm 50 50. Um, mm. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so let's talk about something that dropped in this morning when I was thinking about this uh, episode is how you set yourself up for success. And I know this is going to be very different for everybody depending on their human design type. But you know, I think you've done some incredible things that allow you to not burn yourself out as a projector whilst having incredible success in your business. So what do you think? some of the key things have been for you? Yeah. So I feel like, so when I started my business, I knew obviously having a history of burnout um, and I understood that I was a projector when I started my business. So I tried from the beginning to set my business up to support me as a quad right projector. Um, And so, you know, I've definitely worked hard in my business, but I've kind of strategically set it up in a way that I can still have a lot of flow. So I try to have unstructured days each week. So I might have like three days, you you know, I work with the cycles of the moon. I work with astrology and all of those things firstly to kind of harness the energy and work with the energy. Um, And then I'll have more structured days each week, which is usually Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I have really flowy days on Monday and Friday. And that kind of gives me, you know, the ability to rest and nourish and just be in my receptivity Um, but I've, I've had, I've always had the intention that I wouldn't mirror the unhealthy behaviors of my career in my own business, right? So the overworking, overdoing, trying to prove myself. So having a a good understanding of my not self has been really helpful, which again, it's another thing human design teaches, but, you know, so I can catch myself. And I mean, in the beginning, I still definitely created things from my not self because I was still deconditioning. I'm a lot better with it now and that I catch it normally yeah. before I go too into something but so now I'm really committed to not creating something from the energy of you need to be the best or you need to prove your worth so you need to do this or you need to do it first mm. so you know I've waited 18 months to release different courses and trainings before because I could feel it, I was coming from that place right so with my human design course the, the energy was you need to create this because you need to be the best 
you know, you need to prove yeah. yourself, come on, you need to do it. And so I wouldn't create it with that frequency. So I waited until I could feel it was just really ready to come through me really naturally. And there was no desire to prove around yeah. it. Um, so being really committed with that and having, you know, it can be really tricky with your own business, but trying to have boundaries around how much work I do and don't do, you know, and being really committed to like logging off. Cause it's so easy when it's your own business and you work from home to just mm. keep going, you know, and just be on it. And I've definitely had times when I've been birthing creations and like big offerings where I've worked a lot. Like I've recently come out of a period where I've worked a lot of weekends because I've been birthing like a new offering and a new business and all the things, but honoring that cycle of then, okay, I've done a lot of work now. I'm going to really rest and nourish. And I'm probably going to have like a few really quiet months. Mm. Um, yeah. And so working cyclically to like thinking of my business as a seasonal entity like me and not expecting consistent output from the business or myself has been huge as well. So I'll have seasons that are really big and then I might have seasons where there's less money coming in. And I just like, that's okay. It's not something to panic about. It's because I'm building and working on other things, right. And knowing that it all kind of circles back around. Um, yeah. And this beautifully links to your, your, well, you've actually done a like a, a mini immersion on this, haven't you? But something you talk about a lot, which is the coherence over hustle. Yeah. And yeah, so talk into that because I've literally this morning listened to your latest audio when you spoke about this. So yeah, let's talk about it. Yeah, this is like my whole big thing. I I sent it, I have an audio subscription that I sent a probably pretty aggressive audio a few months ago where I was like, I am done with hustle culture. Like and I am, I'm so done with it. If you look up the definition of hustle, it's like to force and push. Like mm. the actual definition of hustle is not healthy and it goes against everything that I think human design and astrology teaches us. You know, so these, when we understand our energy, when we, when we can use these systems to understand ourselves, we, we know that there's another way, right? Mm. And so it's the difference between, there's a really great book and I haven't read all of it, but it's like the difference between power versus force, Yes, right? When yeah. you're in coherence, you're in your power, you know, you're moving with your energy. When you're hustling, to me, it's you're forcing, you're pushing, you're making things happen and you're going against the grain. Yeah. Um, you're not, and oftentimes when we're, to me, when we're hustling, well, my experience of it, it brings up a lot of like just memories from my career too, because mm -hmm. that is the mentality. You just make it happen. You just do it even if it doesn't feel right, even if you know there's an easier way or there's something else, or even if you feel like, hang on, we should wait, the timing's not right. You know, like you just keep pushing through. Um, and so it brings up memories of that for me. <laughs> um, and again, hustle to me as well. It's like this, this unhealthy capitalist, patriarchal kind of thing that we've created in that Again, you need to be hustling all the time. If you want to be successful, you need to be hustling all the time. You need to be doing, working 70 hour weeks. You need to be, you know, and I think this isn't to say that hard work is required. I think hard work is definitely required and I've worked really hard, but hard work done from a place of coherence and alignment feels so much different than hard work done from a place of hustle, force and grind, mm -hmm. you know, and especially for pro undefined sacrals, projectors, manifestors and reflectors, like, we just can't afford to hustle because burnout for us can last so much longer mm. than it can for the generators and the many gens. Um, and I get extra like fiery when I see generators or many gens teaching hustle, like hustle culture, yeah. you know, when not understanding like what that would actually do to a projector manifest or a reflector. Um, you know, so it's like just going with the energy, you know, harnessing yeah. your natural talents and abil abilities, not trying to force a square peg in a round hole, which it's just working smarter, not harder, in my opinion. But I'm really passionate about it. I hate the word hustle too. Like yeah. I'm just. <sighs> like... Yeah. So I, I launched my business. It's coming up to two years since I launched my business. And I launched with the tagline, helping women maintain their health through the hustle. Yeah. And I was like, but I was, I was passionate hustler. Like it was, yeah. uh, you know, it's one of those things, like many people, like or it as a badge of honor. You know, I was I identified as hardworking. Mm -hmm. uh, I identified, you know, as going the extra mile and all those different things. And this is this is the thing for anyone that's listening. It's like, oh, you can't just like, you know, working hard has got me success. I very much identified as that person as well. It's like mm -hmm. I'd achieved a lot of reward from working hard. And when I launched my business, you know, I left 
that corporate world so I could have a better work-life balance and be present with my kids and all those different things. And when I launched my business, do you know what? I keep feeling like I want to say first business. Like it really feels like something else coming through right now. I don't know what it is. Um, and I, I burnt myself out again within like four months because I, it was just, a, I was just in a different location doing different things, but I was just hustling just as hard, you know, every single, I was a full-time mum with a baby. And it's like every time they were napping, I was working in the evenings. I was, you know, every, you know, and then I was up all night breastfeeding. And, th- and this is what people say, you know, so many people will say to have a successful business, you know, you need to be working through the night. Like I used to have a, t- a teacher at school he used to say, if someone said they hadn't like done the homework, like what were you doing between one and 4 a.m.? Like you should be up in the night getting stuff done. <laughs> like, you know, move heaven and earth to get stuff done. And like you say, it just, it burns so many of us out. And then we're not in alignment. We're not, one of the biggest things for me about being in that space of just hustling, 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 forcing, doing all the time. Um, and I used to talk this, about this a lot in my previous podcast is, we're so disconnected from our intuition when we're in that space because we're just we're, well we're in the mind but we're just going 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 and we don't have any spaciousness to just sit and like hear the messages that are coming through so then we're not making aligned decisions and obviously you know taking that further with human design you know I'm an emotional authority you've got no chance to ride an emotional wave if you're kind of in that go 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 energy <laughs> um so yeah, it's just, it's like you say, it's kind of how society is being set up and how we're made to be- believe we need to be. And then we get rewarded for that hustle behavior, like you say, being in our not self. And then it can feel quite scary for people to put the brakes on and slow down. That's certainly mm. something that I felt like if I wasn't in the office, if I wasn't the first one in the office in the morning and the last one to leave at night, I would be seen as not valuable enough. And I'd be overlooked for promotions or overlooked for pay rises, bonuses, or, you know, do you know what I mean? So, which was all coming from me because I numerous times got told by line managers, I've never asked you to work weekends, Linda. I've never asked you to work, you know, until nine o'clock at night, Linda. It was like, you know, sometimes enough is enough, you know, sometimes done is better than perfect, but it just felt like being in that environment. Mm. That's how you need That's to what- be. That's what we do as projectors though, right? We amplify yeah. all that sacral energy and we don't know when enough is enough. And that's why it can be so toxic for us because yeah. we don't know we don't know when to stop. Like yeah. projectors generally are like the overworkers and the overdoers in a company yeah. or in a business. Yeah. Um, to me, it's like really important just to think about like, because what I see happening is a lot of people filling time with busyness mm. and it's like, is the, you know, would you rather feel successful because you're you're busy all the time and you're tired and you're exhausted because that's really like, that's kind of a line for a generator or a money gen. Like if they're responding yeah. and it's correct, then that's amazing. But if you're a projector, a manifestor or a reflector, like that's never going to bring you that feeling of success or peace or surprise, you know, that you really are here for, you know, it's like, yeah being more yeah. potent and precise with how you do your energy. But we live in a world, it's, it's, it's kind of, again, the nature of the world we live in. The world that we live in is designed to create factory workers and it's designed to create people who like clock in and clock out. And it's very much time for time for money, right? And what projectors, what a lot of us are here to do is really kind of rewrite that to be like, well, it's about value for money. It's not my time has nothing to do with this. It's the impact and the value that I'm providing. Um, yeah which can happen in an hour, you know, this whole, I think it's all connected to this greater shift too. I think we're moving beyond that for all energy types, the needing to be at a desk from eight till six to be considered a valuable asset with no regard to like what you, you you know, what value you're actually creating. Um, Yeah. And something that you said when we're in the mastermind that I've, I've really like held on to, and I now like say it to all of my clients as well is, getting up in the morning and you know having some kind of altar or just your desk or wherever it is that you want Mm. want to connect with your business and each day saying um these aren't your words but this is how I've like changed it to my own words but yeah how can I how can I show up of service to my business today how can I show up in devotion in my business today and and uh, what does the business require of me and you know because sometimes we do just want to avoid doing stuff because, you know, for example, we might have done an Instagram post and it did really badly, inverted commas, 
And then it's like our ego's taken a hit and it's like, no one likes it. And I've spent three hours writing that and no one's read it. And you know, it's flop. So I'm going to, I'm going to ghost Instagram and I'm not going to show up today. So sometimes we'll be in that. And, but sometimes it'll, it will be in a genuine, like, do you know what? Nothing's coming through today. I don't have anything to share. So I won't. And, it, and it's, and it's just checking the energy of where you're coming from. You're like, if you don't want to, but yeah, each day it's like, you know, particularly as a working mum, and I've only got limited time. So it's like, you know, first and foremost, it's going to be my clients. But then if I haven't got a client call, how can I share the service to my business today? Sometimes it'll be an Instagram post, you know, sometimes it'll be a podcast. Sometimes it'll be sitting and actually thinking about the future, more CEO energy, you know, more future visioning stuff. And that's something actually, perhaps you might want to chat about this as well, is I often think we don't give ourselves time enough to do within our businesses. It's like we do get very much in the business and we don't spend enough time you know outside of looking looking at what's looking at what's going on you know future thinking and I actually called myself out on it a couple of weeks ago because the processes I'm taking the processes I take clients through to set their businesses up for success I often bypass so much of it because it's like oh actually I just want to do this now and I want to do this now and and that feels like you know to this to this alignment piece it's like oh if I'm doing I'm going to be doing now and this is going to bring me success instead of like take some time back back and planning ahead going on tangent on that note then CEO days CEO time do you have like do you do like monthly days do you do quarterly or is it like an everyday kind of thing you know how do you work with like your CEO energy in your business and that longer term Mm. Mm. being so non-strategic I was about to say super flowy with it (laughs) I have in my calendar Friday is CEO money day because Friday yeah. being Venus day. Mm-hmm. And so I tend to not book calls. I don't have meetings. I don't have clients on a Friday. And so I do often sometime on like a Friday morning, we'll like sit down and tune into like, you know, cause well, every morning I sit down and tune into the business and I, you know, say my little prayer and ask like how I can be of service. But um, that would be the day I would more, look ahead to the future my process for that is super chill and relaxed though like I have a vision of what's coming but I surrender it to strategy and authority Mm. you know so I try not to stay too in the vision all the time and just trust that if I'm following my strategy and authority this is going to connect the dots Mm. um I do connect to it on the new moon though you know so that's probably my big yeah kind of manifestation portal each month is always the new moon um yeah um when it comes to like money and stuff like that in the business I like to have like money dates on a Friday and I like to do like self-care on a Friday you know sometimes you know like and sometimes on a Friday I don't do anything either if I sit down and I'm like what how can I be of service what's needed today sometimes I literally get the like take yourself to the beach and yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go yeah. take my journal and go down to the beach. And in my head, I might make myself feel like guilty, like, oh, you should be doing mm-hmm. something on the business. But I know that serves me, which is going to serve the business as well. Um, yeah, that's what I meant to say. Yeah, I went, got, went on with my tangents. Yeah, yeah. Some days of being in service is, yeah, just take a day off, rest, go for a walk. It, it's another thing, yeah. isn't it? As a business, I, I was actually reflecting on this as well. Like as a business owner, you can easily not book in holidays as well, because it's going to be, there's always something coming up. And, you know, again, this is another thing we see on Instagram. It's like people living like that nomad life and they're like, oh, I'm just living my best life and I I don't work and I've got millions of pounds coming in. But then the reality for so many of them is it's like, actually, I'm just working 365 days a year because this always feels like something to be done. And I think, yeah, having that rest is so important. But yeah, sometimes the best thing we can do is go for a walk, connect in nature, Mm. sit and have a little medi, you know, there's like that could be, yeah. Um, you've launched a new business. It's very exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I and I love that, like you say, it came through very clearly as a new business, like it was something as a separate entity. So let's let's just and then this is this very much ties in with like listening to your body and listening to like the the nudges and everything. So tell everybody about this new business and how it came through and and why you've decided to set up this separate entity. Mm, so I always feel like offers and things in my field like as you know like I'll start to when I when there's a course or there's something I'm going to create I just start to get a sense of it um and so this entity came in 
18 months or two years ago. It's been, it's been in my field for quite a while. I didn't know exactly. So there's going to be different phases. And so we've really just launched phase one. There's kind Mm. of a phase two, phase three, phase four that are all coming. Um, And so when it first came in, it was more the phase four that I really kind of felt and wasn't really sure of like, yeah, anyway, like how things would work out. And I just kind of kept it there, you know, like the name of it dropped in. Um, I went through my whole logical mind thing though, of questioning the name and doubting the name and like, then went through a whole process of it and then came back and I was like, oh, it's this, Amy, come on. This is what it's been the whole time. You know, this is the name. Why do you have to go through, you know, what the mind does? Um, But no, it feels like I've, it felt like birthing a baby, to be honest. Like I felt like there was the last nine months, especially, um, it really solidified for me in like December last year, what it was going to be. So because I work with these modalities, human design and astrology, my the dream was to have a platform where people could come and look up their human design and their astrology charts where they could purchase like digital products. Um, there might even be courses in the future. You know, there might be an app, um, you know, just like a place where people come and like learn, right? And mm-hmm. have really great chart software because as an astrologer, that's something that's always really annoyed me with the human design software, like astrology software and chart calculators can be so amazing and human design charts have always seemed a bit lacking in certain areas, you know? Um, So yeah, anyway, so literally I had no idea how this was going to happen. What happened was the developers who I have ended up working with on this, like reached out to me in I think January And it all just kind of flowed from there. But it was like birthing a baby. I went through a lot of like physical things as I was bringing this through, Um, you know, like had to do a lot of nervous system work. I had like just lots of, I had a really weird like June, like right as I was coming to the end of this, I had like Mm. some childhood trauma resurface. I hurt my neck. I had stuff going on with my menstrual cycle. It was just like, all of these extra things came up to work through. Um, Yeah, but no, so I'm really excited, but it's always felt like a separate entity. I could tell it was never going to be like, I would add a a chart software to like my Amy Lee website. Like it was always like this separate entity. Um, And yeah, I don't know what else you want to know, but it's been like having, it's felt like having a baby to me, Considering, but I'm childless. So I don't know what the, obviously I haven't (laughs) given birth. But just the, the timeline of it and the, 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 particularly the last three months of it, I really went into a bit of like a hibernation with it. And not that I was, you know, there was definitely times I was working a lot on it. And at the same time, I was having lots of like afternoons off, lots of just sitting on the beach, lots of just taking my dog for a swim for three hours. Like, so it was like there was work, but I really went into this like self-care looking after myself, lots of nature time just to support my body through the, the birth, like through the expansion piece. So I didn't totally yeah. Um, contract. Mm. Yeah. Because that's, that's what can happen. Yeah. I've got a, I've got an invitation for you linked to that, which came through when I was in the shower a, a couple of weeks ago and I haven't got around to message you. I won't do it on here because I don't want to put you on the spot. But yeah, an invitation <laughs> came through for you. And I was like, I need to message Amy about this. Um, yeah, so the so so currently, so obviously it's going to be different phases. But currently, what people can do is they can they can visit the website. We'll pop the link in the show notes, and they can order their own human design guide, which takes yeah. them through lots of things. So I I I've bought them. I've started buying them for my clients, and I've bought them for like my family and stuff. So. <laughs> and it, yeah, and it's obviously it's created by Amy. So it's the words are beautiful, and the the look of it is beautiful and it's just full of loads of value and like you say you've, you used to do this like manually a couple of years ago like manually is that the right word but yeah you used to do it like each one individually like you used to write it out and it became really time time a lot of time what's time intensive is that the word yeah and focus yeah. intensive yeah they, when I handed them as a quad ride I'm not designed to focus and that was probably the hardest thing like I loved making them and it wasn't even necessarily the time. It was that I was just spending hours and hours and hours a day focused with text and bringing stuff together. And then I was handwriting yeah. bits and pieces of it. Yeah. So we always wanted to bring them back to, you know, and it, it, I, um, there was always an intention there. But I always said to my team, like, only if it's automated, because I'm 
quadrat projector it wouldn't yeah. be aligned for me to be making something like this it goes against so much of my own design yeah um, so it's interesting because when I said how do you set yourself up for success this is one of the things that I was thinking to myself is like these passive income streams as a projector yeah, yeah. so like setting up obviously it's a huge amount of work up front but now this can live forever um yeah and obviously the phases are going to come but it's like yeah people can order you can just be asleep and you're getting these orders in and money dropping into your account you also yeah. have your subscription which is incredible and incredible value um I said to you didn't I that I I, I signed up to somebody else and it was like ter- the experience was terrible like compared to what I get from you and and your price is like crazy so yeah let's let, let's just talk a little bit about that as well because Mm. I know that involves work because, you know, each week you're recording and sometimes, you know, you give incredible amounts of trainings each week, but again, it's reaching the masses. It's like, you know, not that one-to-one focus time with one person. It's like creating and then being able to reach lots of different Mm. people and that subscription. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely been my intention this year has been, um, I think, I I realized this around December last year that I really wanted to focus more on kind of scalable offers in saying that I do think, I don't necessarily think, you know, um, it's, you know, correct for everyone to move into scalable offers like straight away. I think I did spend kind of four years really, really focusing on like my one-on-one, really focusing on my group programs, you know, and really focus on like building my community and my audience on, on Instagram. That's really helped that when I've launched these, there's been people there. Um, But no, I do think it's smart. Like, and just for projectors, like we're not designed to be like the doers and the workers, right? So it is really helpful to have things that are like evergreen or things that are kind of sitting there and able to be sold all of the time um so that you know as you're sharing and communicating like because you have to market yourself anyway right and those indirect kind of sales can kind of come in um but I'm also a five I'm a five one and you know the five in human design is really here to universalize and so which we are really here to give like to take concepts translated in really practical ways that can kind of reach the masses too Mm -hmm. you know so I've been very aware of that over the last few years that I've been really wanting to move into things that are more one-to-many that still complement yeah. my like one-to-one and yeah. one-to-small group things. So I still love like one-on-one clients. I love my little intimate projector mastermind yeah. groups, you know, but this is just, it, it allows me to do more of that if I have these other things on the side. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so tell people what they can expect from the subscription if they sign up from that. Oh, thanks, honey. Well, it's meant to, well, it's kind of changed and evolved. I share, again, it, I'm so receptive. So there's no structure. There's usually, there's between sort of two and five audios a week. Most weeks it's three, I think, Um, that can be anywhere from like 15 minutes up to like 40, up to like, I shared one the other week, there was an hour. Um, And it's kind of into all things, human design, astrology and business. So sometimes it's like transit updates and how to work with the transits. Um, sometimes like today it will be something that uh, some personal insights around like what I'm moving through in my business. Mm. Um, and then sometimes it's like specific, like human design things. Like if you have Mm. this in your chart, this is for you. Um, like I did the note for fifth lines the other day. Sometimes I'll talk about specific centers and what that could mean. Um, Mm. so it's really designed to be just a space to receive and things that can help you in your life and your business, help you understand yourself better and help you understand like the transits and kind of that cosmic energy that we're all kind of moving through right to try to harness it and work with it again because that's what helps us create this coherence and this flow if we can work with the transits rather than push and force and resist um what's trying to happen yeah, um, yeah. I, I love how you always say as well it's like we sometimes like become like so like self-absorbed as humans and it's like this is going on and I feel like this and then and you always say and remember everyone around you is moving through the same energy and the same thing so be kind be kind to people around you yeah. like just know you know it, something might be go- going on where like you're putting heads with your partner for example and then it's like be kind because they're moving the stage through the same thing yeah what would you say is the most trans what made the biggest difference having learned human design and or astrology however you want to answer this um you maybe you want a little bit of both like what what would you say like was most life-changing for you and yeah what change what change had the biggest impact on your life 
Mm, I, ooh, I would say like the biggest tangible impact was definitely things in my human design, like learning just that I'm a projector was, that was yeah. life-changing. Like, and it just explains so much, you know, for me, even just learning about bitterness, and like needing to wait yeah. for invitations. I was like, this is yeah. why, this is why I try to help and I try to guide and people don't receive it, right? Because yeah. I was trying to give unsolicited advice all the time, yeah. um, which is just abrasive and annoying to other people when a projector does it. So probably that and learning that I was a five, five, mm. one profile, that was again, huge and really affirming for me um, for a lot of experiences I've had in my life of that savior villain or hero villain kind of role and mm. feeling the projected being projected upon, which happens for five, where people kind of see us through their own lens. Mm. Um, that was super affirming. And then it would have been learning I was a quad right. That was again, like the next piece of like, this is why the pressure, the structure, this is my why my body was actually trying to show me that this isn't right for you because I was living and working in environments that were really pressured and structured and focused. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then nervous system, you know, which is why that's been probably the next biggest piece, like really learning about the nervous system diving, which is why I'm like really wanting to learn more about like somatics um, yeah. and the body. Cause I think it's so important and it's so overlooked. We go yeah. straight to mindset and oftentimes it's like, you can do all the mindset work, in yeah. the world but if you're not getting to the root of it in your body because the body yeah. stores trauma and memory it's just yeah. going to stay there um so I think that's yeah been huge for me as well because like what you were saying so disconnected from my body so disconnected mm. up until a couple of years ago um, yeah yeah um oh I could speak to you all day Amy but obviously I realize we're at time um is there anything you want to speak into that I haven't given you a chance to speak into um no I feel like we've discussed so much thank you so much for asking me all these amazing questions I feel like and... I was interrogating you sorry about yeah, that it's just like it. comes in and I'm like ah, question question um you're a, pro- okay. you're a projector that's yeah. what we're here to do right that's what we're here to ask questions yeah, yeah I'd um, love to encourage people to go away and look up their like astrology and their human design because I, I as you know I definitely think these are systems we can learn for ourselves you know, yeah. like it's great to get guidance, but there's so much that you can understand for yourself and start to weave into your own life. Um, yeah. I'll, in fact, in the show notes, I'll drop a link where you can go in. Um, well, obviously you can go and get Amy's human design, human design chart and like look it up. And then if you want to then go on, you can just look up the chart anyway. And then if you want to go and yeah. purchase the full, full guide, then you can do that. But yeah, I, I definitely it's super life changing and understanding those around you as well. Like understanding, you know, my husband is a, Capricorn generator you know <laughs> it, you know and I'm a like a Taurian projector like you know there's 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 differences I was gonna say yeah I'm also Gemini MC like you mm. so yeah um amazing so how can people obviously we'll drop things in the show notes how can people work with you right now what, what do you recommend yeah probably those two channels a subscription and yeah. um or an energy guide and like you said you can just go to the website and look you can create an account and just look up charts and save charts you know and only if you want to you can then buy energy guides um yeah and like I do have a wait list for readings every now and again when I get like a feeling I'll open up space for readings um yeah. and yeah that's kind of it at the moment I mean I work with people one-on-one and projector mastermind will open soon but they're very small containers yes um, yeah I saw you'd pop that on your stories this morning and I was like so <laughs> jealous I was like I want to come in it again um <laughs> yeah Amy holds the most beautiful spaces and as you can tell from her voice like such a soothing voice which is why I would recommend people sign up for the audio transmissions as well because yeah just having her just listening to her in the morning like really calms me my day anyway um thank you so much Amy so grateful for you um don't disappear because I'm just going to stop the recording and um, yeah, speak to you soon. Thanks, honey. Thanks for having me.